Welcome, girls and boys, to Church by the Sea Bible Store Hour. Every Sunday morning, we would like to have you join us. And Miss Valerie and I, I'm Miss Joanne, and Miss Valerie and I are always eager to hear what you've been doing all week. And we know that this past week was the end of summer for most of everyone. You had a big holiday. And now we're back in school or club or whatever, where we gather together and we do many good things when we are together. And that's what our lesson is about today, is that the more we get together, the happier we be and the bit more things we will accomplish. As we grow up, we learn to do ride a bike, skip, take care of ourselves, go to school, we're pretty powerful. We can do a lot of things. And this story is about some boys and girls in a class or a group of people that they meet with. And they're expecting another class to come and visit them and see their project. They have built a garden and they even have little pets. And they're the ones who did it all by themselves, working together, sharing their ideas. So they're excited that these other boys and girls in a group are coming to see them. So before we hear the story, let's bow our heads and say our prayer. Hold your hands and open your heart. Loving God, thank you for helping us together, gather to each day for stories and to pray. Thank you for guiding us to learning to work together, sharing our love and our ways to care for the earth. Thank you for our, flower, our families and our friends. Help us to care for each other and for our beautiful earth. Amen. Okay, we'd like Tom and Laura. Hi, I'm Tom and I'm Laura. And here we have the, the host and hostesses for visit to the garden to the school. Good morning. That's Barney <laughs> and Caitlin. So we'll pop into us. Today's story is about these children in this classroom event. They've worked hard together to share their knowledge and their care for each other as well as planet Earth. You've learned so many things as you've grown up and every day we hear of children who have done extraordinary things. that have started little co companies or they're selling lemonade or they're helping their friends or helping their grandparents. So we realize that you have responsibility and you have power in knowing so many things that you can do. Many of us have participated in projects like clean up the beach or help collect books for children. And I remember having signed up long ago for a clean up the beach uh, program and I woke up thinking, I don't want to do this. It's going to be hot and sweaty and I, would be, I won't even get to go swimming. And I thought, but I signed up. I have to go. I will go do it. And you cannot imagine how extraordinary it was. It was the most wonderful experience and I was so happy about it. So we realized that we are capable of doing many things. And as we grow up, we get more responsibilities. Now let's check in to our boys and girls that are visiting the class and they're going to tell about their project. And the teacher is gathering together in their circle story time. And she says, girls and boys, I would like you to meet Tom and Laura, who we met before. We met before, hi. Yeah. And they want to hear all about our garden and our classroom pets. They also want to tell us about some things that we can do together to help the planning earth. Hello, boys and girls. Hello, children. Oh, hi. Thank you. We are so happy to be here. Tell us about your garden. Well, we really worked hard. We worked and worked in the dirt. First of all, we had to keep Think a big, long line, carefully digging the dirt, getting hot and dirty. And then we put little seeds in the garden, down in that little 
going, like you've seen people do. And we put the earth on it very carefully, very, very carefully. And then, of course, we watered it. And what do we have now? We have flowers and we have vegetables. So exciting. Wonderful, said Laura. <laughs> It sounds like you work together to make a beautiful garden. And how about your pets, said Tom? How do you look after them? Oh, we have to take care of them, feed them, be sure they're watered, and give them TLC, tender loving care. All the children started to talk at once. We give them food and water, we clean them. We clean their cages. We give them toys to play with. So we're- Tom and Laura loved. Yeah, lots of love. I was gonna say TLC all over the place. They it, said, oh, you're doing a great job of working together to care for your garden and your pets. Good for you. Now, let's think of some more ways that we can work together. I wonder what you could do in your neighborhood. Ah, you know what you could do in your neighborhood? You can walk around and you can pick up all of the things that people throw and litter with and uh, put it all in the garbage and in the recycling so that your neighborhood looks uh, clean and neat and tidy and um, that keep your eyes open. Uh, those are good ideas, said Tom. We thought it I, might be. Laura, I wonder what we could do about recycling. Well, I hope you all have a recycling bin in your house like I do, and you can put in it your glass bottles, your tin cans, and your paper so that you can, uh, it can all be hopefully taken and crushed up and made into um, to be used again. And when you go shopping now, you can buy a lot of things that say, this is recycled paper, or this is recycled. And that tells you that this is made from something that somebody else has thrown away and it's been recycled and you are using it again instead of chopping down a tree and starting with you know the whole thing. So recycling now is uh, something that we can all definitely do in our homes and the waste uh, truck will take it, the special one will come round and they will take it somewhere so that it can be melted down if it's a metal or whatever they have to do. And then they can start again and, and use it again. So that's something you can all do. Um, those were great ideas, said Tom. And I wonder how we can look after parks and rivers and lakes. Well, it would be great if we all just keep our eyes on your own neighborhood and anywhere that you go, like the beach that I was telling you, that I know many of you have had experience with that. Just keep your eyes open and see what would make the earth look better. What would take better care of your parks and your gardens, your beaches? And even think of in your neighborhood, what a great thing it would be if you invited some of your neighbors to come see what you did and offer to help them. A lot of people want to do this, but they feel they don't know where to begin. So come and see our garden. Come and see how we took care of our pets. Come, and, come to my beach. Come and look where I go. We pick up the things and put them in the trash bins. Everywhere you are, there's a place that you can help. And we know you, we've seen you do it. We know you have the power. That's how we learn is sharing with each other, just as Miss Valerie said, go to your neighbor, talk to people, help clean up, celebrate the earth and celebrate each other. Okay, so Laura and Tom, they clapped their hands because they were very impressed. And they said, thank you everybody for sharing with us. Can we come and visit you again? Oh, we hope you can. And now Miss Valerie is going to give us some real good ways to think about our earth, to think about caring for each other and exchange ideas, share your ways that you're doing to help. Thank you, Miss Joanne. <laughs> I think that even today, 
I have more questions than answers about how to be God's helper. But that's good because I'm, when I'm looking for answers, it's like having an adventure and I get lots of surprises. It really is very important for me to start every day with a um, thankful gratitude list to count all my blessings that I have in life because I surely have a lot of them. And I think we need to remind ourselves every day that we have a tap that we turn on and water comes out and we have a light switch and we turn it and the lights come on. And my home is very nice and cool right now because I have air conditioning. And you know, this is, this is a lot of things that we take for granted, but not every other person in the world has running water in their house or electricity. They have to get up when the sun comes up and they have to go to sleep in, and the sun goes down because they don't have um, electricity in, in their um, homes. So that's a good way for me to start every day is to think of how blessed I am and how many oh, uh, wonderful things I have in my life. And so I was thinking you were all gone back to school now. And I often hear some of you say, oh, I wish I didn't have to go to school tomorrow. Oh, I don't like going to school. And I thought, you know, there are thousands, I think more than that, of little boys and girls around the world in a lot of different countries who would love to go to school every day. They think, oh, you are so lucky. You can go to school, you can learn, you have teachers, you have books to read, you have paper to write on, you have pencils, you have paint, you have all these things. And so try not to grumble too much about having to go to school. Remind yourself that there is a world full of little boys and girls who think you are the luckiest children in the whole world. And, and actually, shall I tell you a secret? I think you actually are. Because I was thinking, supposing these little boys and girls and big children, they all came suddenly, they would boom, here on a visit. And so they got to school with you. And then you said, oh, come on, let's go to this, let's go on to the grocery store. Well, I think by this point that when you've taken them through the vegetables and you've taken them through all the bread and all the variety of foods, they probably, uh, are, are just, I would say collapsing with shock because you know that some of these children have one meal a day and it would be like just some rice maybe and fruit that you could have a mango, you could have a raspberry. You, I mean, probably if they have one fruit a week, that's a treasure to them. So again, these are all blessings. And then after they got through the shop there, you took them to Aventura. Oh, that would be really <laughs> way too much. <laughs> and you know, you think of all those stores that have all those goodies, all those clothes, and so I think, you know, just sit down and count your blessings because they are very, you know, we do have an amazing amount. So really and truly, I think we are the most fortunate people in, in the ones that live in America or England or Europe and because we have so many uh, riches in our life. So what can we do to help? Okay, we could all give something. It's called donating. So, you know, when you, you know, you have a lot of beautiful clothes and often, you know, you grow very fast and they look really very nice when, um, when you can't wear them anymore. So you can always donate them. I think sometimes now, um, you know, a lot of people in Haiti have lost a lot of things and there's a lot of um, Haitian people living here in Miami who actually collect things clothes and, and things and then they fill a big container and ship it uh, to the people living in Haiti so again don't throw anything away if it looks like somebody else could use it because there's somebody out there who would probably love to have it and another thing 
is um, you can donate money. And so I got a little, this, I, uh, you could have a donation jar. And, um, you know, uh, there's a lot of, they call charities. And these people collect money or from all around the world. And then they use that money to take and, and give food to people who don't have enough food. And I think right now um, they are doing a lot of work in, um, in Afghanistan, um, two groups. And so they're, they're, they provide food for people. They provide medicines for people. There's a wonderful group called Doctors Without Borders. And, and they um, set up clinics around the world and they help people who are sick and, and provide medicine. So there's a lot of people doing some wonderful things, but they do need money to keep working. So um, you could have a little donation jar and every week put a little, you know, something in. And then you could say to people, you know, I have everything I need on my birthday, please. Would you just put a donation in our donation jar? because I, I don't think I need any more toys. I, I, I really have more clothes than I can possibly wear. And so you can always ask people to give a donation um, instead of giving you a, a gift of something that you really don't need. And I think too, um, one time we had little boxes and um, I thought that uh, mine is, we are God's family and that's everybody. And you could use that if you still had one and you decorated it because you could always, use that as a little uh, donation box as well. So that's something that you could chat with your family about and say, you know, I think it would be nice and mum and dad can go online and Google and come up with some things. And then, you know, we chat about it, chat about it and, um, you know, you can decide which one you think that that would be the, the best one for you to uh, give and help with what they are doing. Because there's a lot of people out there really doing some great things that we could do a little bit to, to make their job easier and, and better. So this time, uh, craft today is walking in Jesus's footstep. I don't know if you can see it. So I have three footsteps here and I put them on a little stick, but you can put them on a, a piece of uh, material if you want. So just, um, you just need some colored construction paper. I kind of did a footstep for the earth I did a footstep for rivers and the ocean and rain, water really. And then I did this one for the sky and uh, for the stars. So that was my, the three, but you could use, you think of other things to uh, make the footsteps for. And then I decorated them with little pictures and then I found some little stickers. Um, so you can do some little drawings or you can use some little stickers if you have, and then you can hang it up and let it blow in the wind or something. Oh, and, um, you know, like walking in Jesus's footsteps, doing, you know, things to uh, be, he would do uh, like taking care of everybody and, and the planet and, uh, and not putting out all this nasty gook into to, um, the atmosphere that we're breathing. So I had a little pattern. You could draw your foot if you wanted to, or, you know, you could do your mum's foot if you wanted a bigger one. So I made a little pattern. I, I cut it out actually, because it's a little bit small for anybody in my house, but it's only me. And then, I, and then I just cut them out from the colored paper. And then I decorated them and then I had a little wool. And so I had my little hole puncher and then I punched a little hole. And if you haven't got any wool, you could use string or a little thin ribbon or something and then just kind of hang them. And then, as I say, I had a little stick like that. I think it's gotten a bit like it should be up here. But anyway, and then you can remind everybody that you're following in Jesus's footsteps every day. So you've got two projects this week to do all these good things and start having a little donation and thinking about what you can give to help other people. So I think that would be a good week for us, Miss Joanna. Many good ideas. Kindness. I've got my angels here. Yes. Kindness. And thinking about other people. So I thought kindness is always good. Responsibility too. I again I, I think we have to remind ourselves sometimes. I have that one too. I think this really Isn't that shows funny. Good, because that's the sense that we both have that we have a responsibility 
to help other people because we are very blessed. So that's that's a, a, a responsibility that we all have right. to be thankful for our blessings and be able to see that we can share them and help other people who, who are less fortunate. Yeah. And um, the other one I had was compassion. She stayed out with me all week. And I think compassion is being uh, understanding that other people might have some problems and um, be helpful about it and be be compassionate not like you have to and we have to understand that a lot of people aren't as lucky as we are right and we must be compassionate about that and and know that we we should be much kinder to one another and that is a good word compassion did you have any other ones miss joanne yeah. well i thought as you were describing all the activities, I thought you want to experience joy when you're doing these things, when you're caring for others. Exactly. You will see when you create some of the things Valerie's shown you, or you do a garden, or you do a cleanup. There's a lot of joy, as I felt when I thought at first it's going to be hot and dirty and everything. There was such joy in it and such fun. Another thing I would like you to think of is your power. Your power as a young person all the things you've learned and look at the things you can do that Valerie is telling you about and different right. cleanups things and thoughtfulness and compassion. So you do have power and we hear every day of things that young people like you have done. And most of all, we want you to have joy in your doing. And, and I think it's true that, that you get a lot of joy out of being helpful to other people and seeing other people you can do it. you've yeah. given them um you know just sometimes just listening to people or you know being considerate and that perhaps uh, it is i think there's a little phrase that says it is through giving that we receive mm -hmm. and i think that is so true that when we help other people and and we're able to see uh, you know how meaningful the help was that it, it makes you feel that special joy that you've been able to do that and I think you know like you say we tend to think that small children don't have the power but wow. when you look at them they have amazing power and and they're a good reminder of how we can care better for one another than we perhaps do as we get older so you know I think don't don't underestimate your influence to, on people uh, uh, to be loving and kind and, and good helpers. So you have a lot of uh, power in that. Yeah. Good. So shall we uh, close with a prayer today? Yeah, let's do it. And I hope that everybody has a, a helpful week ahead of them. Yeah. Thank you, God, for all my blessings. Let me remember that I can walk in Jesus's footsteps and show love and caring to everyone sharing this world with me. Amen. Amen. Have a wonderful week. Absolutely. And share your love and do some of these things we're talking about today because we know you can do it. <laughs> and when that, that day when you don't want to get out of bed, remember that you have this treasure in your life. Go to school every day. <laughs> Absolutely. And well, be with your friends, well, teachers, and learning so much. Yes. Yeah. Be safe. Right. Be loving. And be kind. Be kind. Yes. <laughs>